Hello everyone, Pahamar here with episode 11 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode we are going to talk about item stacks. But first, I did want to go over something that uh, someone pointed out uh, in between this episode and the last episode. Um, so the creative tab that we created last time, we had, uh, we overrided, we overrode the get translated tab label method in order to return our uh, localized string. Uh, so someone's actually pointed out that the string that you put in for your creative tab here uh, actually can be used to localize uh, that tab. So uh, I'll show you what we're going to do here. First, so this is just to uh, to go back to a proper format. It's um, The reason we're doing this, I should explain before I get started, hey, is that uh, it's considered bad practice to hard code in localized text when you have the ability to localize it. Um, so here, I will get rid of this method because we do not need it. And I'm just going to lowercase our mod ID there. So what we need to do now is go into our assets, to our localization file here. And creative tabs actually start with this item group. And then we're going to do the mod ID, which is let's mod reboot. We're going to say that that's equal to let's mod reboot. And if we did that right, when we start Minecraft, and we go into our world, when we go to our tab here, we'll see it's been localized. So that is how you can localize, properly localize your creative tab. Something else I want to go over is a couple of people have been asking how you can get your texture to work in game uh, inside of um, Eclipse or Idea. What you want to do is you want to go to, at least I'll show you an idea. In Idea, you're going to want to go to Edit Configuration and uh, for your Minecraft client here. Previously we had all those program arguments, we've been over this a few times now. So what you want to do here, if you want to use your own skin, is you add in the argument dash dash username and your email and your password. So what this is, the username password combination is the same username password that you use to log into your Minecraft account. Uh, so if you have a Mojang account, you're going to want to use the email address associated with it. Uh, you should know how to use your account details and your password. And if you're still on the old Minecraft uh, username, it's that. So that is how you can set yourself up with your proper uh, authenticated user, uh, which will allow you to get onto online accounts. So with those two things out of the way, uh, today we're actually going to talk something uh, a little bit more abstract. So there's not any code we're going to need to write today, but we'll look at a couple pieces of code. Today I want to talk about item stacks. Um, the reason I want to do that is because um, we've been over a basic item and a basic block. So a block is something in the world. It's a block of something. An item is something in your hand. It can do stuff like food or an arm piece of armor or something or a tool. Um, an item stack is considered an instance of an item. Uh, so when we look at this maple leaf here, um, this describes all items that are going to be maple leaf. So all item maple leaf. When we come into game here, uh, when we actually have one in our hands, we actually have an item stack of the item maple leaf. So there's several key pieces of uh, an item stack. First, an item stack contains an item. Um, you can actually initialize an item stack with a block, but what you get in that case is a special case of item called item block. So that's basically the block in item form. So the item stack contains an item. It also has metadata, also known as uh, damage data, or um, yeah, damage data, we'll call it that. That is the unique uh, bit of information for this. So for example, if we were to look at a pickaxe, the item stack for this pickaxe right here, it contains the item, item pickaxe, and the damage value, the metadata, is the durability for the item. Now, durability is, is generally one-to-one -one with uh, damage or metadata. Um, but you can also store it in something called NBT data. That NBT, 
stands for named binary tag. Named binary tags, or NBT, is useful for storing all kinds of different unique information on an item. So for example, this diamond pickaxe right here, it doesn't have any NBT data on it because it doesn't have anything extra it needs other than, you know, here's the item and the durability. Whereas if we were to look at these enchanted books, these enchanted books, the enchantment is actually stored as NBT data. So that's how you know uh, what type of enchant it is. So here it's Silk Touch. You can tell its strength, which is of strength one. Um, so this way you can actually store all kinds of unique information. Uh, named ta name tags, when you actually uh, use these in an anvil to give a proper name to something, uh, something you want to rename, um, it actually stores that name in the NBT data for that item stack. So that allows you to have multiple unique instances of that item or block um, in an item stack form, um, but have different information on it. Other than that, item stacks are uh, fairly simple. I wanted to give this quick um, intro as to what they are because it is very important to understand what makes up an item stack. Um, and actually, if we look at the item class here, I just want to show the structure. You can see that there's a lot of methods that actually take in an item stack and return information on it. And the reason for it is because um, you may have an item of a certain type and you might want to get more information off of a particular instance of that item. So that's why you end up with these methods here like has container item. It takes in an item stack and it returns whether or not it has a container item for, for instance. Um, similarly, this is how you could get multiple different textures from one particular item. It's a very common thing that someone will actually reuse a um, an item and they'll actually have different textures and different instances of that item based off of the metadata. So for example, you know what, let's show you something. Here's handy dandy equivalent exchange three. And let us have a look. Let's find a good one. Let's have a look at fuel. Okay, here is an example of an item that has multiple sub items, and you can tell what those sub items are based off of the metadata. Um, so, one thing is important if you're going to have an item that has multiple textures, uh, you're going to want to have multiple icons. So, that's why we got this array here. Um, I'm not going to go over it here, but uh, there's some people asking how do you have uh, an item with uh, multiple different textures, multiple different sub-items. Um, if you want to see how to do that, uh, I recommend just offline looking at this item alchemical fuel class in the Equivalent Exchange 3 GitHub. It's a pretty simple example of how to do that. But here you can see I'm returning a different texture based off the metadata. So that's that. Um, so the reason, I think I got into this a little earlier in the video, but I'll go over it again. The reason I wanted to cover this first is because uh, in order to talk about recipes, we need to have a firm understanding of what an item stack is. So an item stack is an instance of an item with unique information for that instance. Uh, so for example, a, a pickaxe that has differing durability values, uh, as well as uh, say a book that has a different enchantment on it because we need to understand item stacks before we can truly start talking about named binary tags, uh, NBT data, which we'll get into in the next episode, um, because you really need to understand the concept that an item stack is an instance of an item. I didn't get that at first. It took me a while to understand that when I was first learning how to my mod Minecraft, so I wanted to take time and make sure that you all had a firm, this is why it's like that. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about NBT data. And uh, then after that, we are going to talk about the OR dictionary. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is because the OR dictionary allows us uh, a couple other things in terms of um, nice to haves when we're dealing with recipes. And then we're going to talk about recipes. And recipes use uh, item stacks to uh, build up the recipe for how to make something. So until then, shorter video for today. Um, but hopefully it helps clear up some, uh, some basic understanding. We'll pick it up again next episode when we're talking about NBT data, named binary tags. I've said that like five times now. 
and uh, I guess we'll see you then. So if you have any questions or anything, uh, put them in the comments, let me know on Twitter, or hit me up in IRC, and until then, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again, guys.